Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled. My name is Shaggy and today I'm doing a full solo playthrough of Grand Austria Hotel using the Let's Waltz expansion. I'm not gonna be using any of the expansion materials except for some extra cards that get sort of added into the base game. But other than that, we're gonna be playing strictly the base game using Leopold, the solo opponent. When you're setting up for the solo mode, you pretty much just set up as if you're playing a two player game. And I've done all of that already. We got our 10 dice. We have a random A, B, and C objective card. We have random A, B, and C emperor tile. We shuffled up the staff cards, shuffled up the guest cards, and dealt out five. I then selected one to add to my diner and refilled the market. I start with 10 krona and one of each of the uh, food and drink. We got strudel, we got cake, wine, and coffee. I also get to prepare three rooms. You have to start in your lower left-hand corner, and then everything after that has to be adjacent. I've just gone ahead and prepared the bottom three rooms, which didn't cost me any money. And we've also prepared a board for Leopold. Leopold never takes money or, or goods, so you don't have to worry about that. We take this uh, brown deck, the light brown deck, and we shuffle it. That's gonna be his solo deck. And then the most complicated part of setup, we go through all of the staff cards and we take out every card that has an in-game scoring bonus. We shuffle those up and we give Leopold five of those and just put them here in a little in a little stack. And then you shuffle all of those back into the staff deck and then we draw 10 of those and pick six to keep. And I've already done that. So these are gonna be my six staff members that I get to start with. You also wanna make sure Leopold's board is on the night side, but our board can be on either side and I've chosen the day side. And then Leopold always starts the game. So he gets the first player marker here. Grand Austria Hotel uses a snake draft. He's gonna get the first turn. We're gonna get the second and third. Then Leopold will get the last turn and then we'll flip these around and we'll just keep going back and forth like that. So anyway, that's it. That's the whole game set up. If you don't know how to play Grand Austria Hotel, if you've never even heard of Grand Austria Hotel, don't worry. I'm gonna do what I always do, which is explain the rules as we play. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. The first thing you do at the beginning of every round is roll them bones. Ooh, okay. And now we're gonna place them on the board according to the numbers. So we got no ones, only one, two, Oh, that's gonna be interesting. We got a bunch of threes here. Look at that. Five threes, three fours, and one six. Okay. And Leopold's turns are super easy. You just flip the top card of his deck and you do what it says. Now, I should mention we're playing on the medium difficulty level. We'll see what that means here in a second. We just start at the top of his card and we just do exactly what it says. So right here, this is saying he's gonna take the highest valued blue guest that's in the market. And right now there's only one blue guest, so he's gonna take that. And Leopold doesn't add these to his uh, cafe like we do. He gets to immediately put them into his hotel. So first of all, he would score the points, but that's zero points. He then gets to place a blue room and he's gonna go through his hotel and he's gonna go from left to right, bottom to top and just fill the first blue room that he sees, which will be right there. This just gets discarded and that's it. We refill the market. So that's that. Now he's gonna take a one die. Now there is not a one die to take, so he's gonna take whichever number has the most dice in it. So he's gonna grab a three. If there was a tie, then he would go by this little hand here. He would go in that direction to break the tie. So you'll see it'll either go left to right or right to left. But we don't have to worry about that this time. If you look carefully at this image, you can see it has two lines around the image. It has sort of a gold border with two lines. That means that if you're playing on the hardest difficulty level, you would resolve that action. But if you're playing on the medium or easy, you don't resolve it. We're playing medium level, so we're going to ignore that action and that's Leopold's turn. 
Okay, now it's our turn, and we're gonna get two turns in a row. The first thing you do on your turn is you get to draft one of the guests, and the cost is right there at the bottom. Zero, zero, one, two, and three. Now, money is tight in this game, and I struggle <laughs> mightily with running out of money in this game. I am notorious for that. I'm gonna probably tend towards cheap. I'm kind of liking this guy. So we're gonna grab this red guest here, add them to our diner. And now we get to take one of the dice and take the action that's associated with that die. So let me run over those really quickly. The one die lets you take strudel and cake because what we're trying to do is serve these guests exactly what they want. So you can see here, this guest wants two wine, this guest wants a cake and two wine. So by taking the one action, the one die action, we can get strudel and cake. The only trick is you can never take more cake than strudel. The number two die works similarly. You get wine and coffee, but you can never take more coffee than wine. The number three is preparing rooms, right? In order for these guests, once we've fulfilled their order, they're gonna go into these rooms and we need to have the room prepared first before they can go in. Now, how many rooms can we prepare? It's always equal to the number of dice that are there. So right now there's four dice available. That means we would get to prepare four rooms and it works the same way with getting the goods. However many dice are there, that's how many goods you get to take. So right now at the, at the two, I would only get to take one good. And since you can never have more coffee than wine, it would have to be wine. The four action lets us take money equal to the number of dice or move up the emperor track equal to the number of dice. And I'll explain the emperor track uh, when, we, when we need to deal with that. Just know that it's a good thing to move up that track. Five is how we get our staff members out who give us special benefits. And the six die lets us spend a buck, but we can use that as any of the other uh, categories. We can basically use the six to take any action. Well, I would love to get a bunch of goods to give to my customers, but those dice just didn't appear. We have a weird kind of roll right now. Maybe we want to go ahead and just prepare some rooms while, while we have the chance. I think it'll be helpful for us to look at some of these objectives that we're going after. So the A objective says get six staff members out. That's pretty simple, but that is a lot. It's, that's gonna take a little while. The B objective says have two complete columns that are occupied. That means prepared and there's somebody in them. And the C objective is to have three red, three blue, and three yellow occupied rooms. Well, those two go together quite well. And looking at my board, I'm really thinking about wanting to complete these two rows. That would get me the B objective, and that would be three red, three blue, and two yellow. And then we could just maybe get that yellow there. And that would be all we need for that. So I think that's the plan. We're gonna try to start to fill those up first. The problem is to prepare these rooms at the higher floors, it costs money. The first floor is free to prepare, but the second floor costs one, the third floor costs two, and the fourth floor costs three. Pretty expensive. And like I said, money is pretty tight in this game, but I have a little bit of an answer for that because one of my staff cards well, I have a couple of answers to that, actually. This staff card would let me prepare some free rooms. This staff card would make blue rooms free to prepare. And this one, the florist, makes yellow rooms free to prepare. So if I got those out before I prepared those rooms, then that would save me a little bit of money. The problem is there's no dice there and all the dice are in the pre prepare area. Ooh, boy. So I'm gonna do something that might seem a little strange. Stick with me, I think you'll see why I do this. And who knows, maybe it's the, not the smart thing to do. I'm actually gonna take this die. So because there's only one die there, I can only take one good. But anytime you take a die, you have the option to spend a buck in order to make it a plus one, as if there was an extra die there. 
I think I'm probably gonna do that. I'm gonna spend a buck, and now I can take two goods. It's as if there were two dice there. And I'm gonna take two wine. Now, when you take goods, you can put them immediately onto the guests that need them. And so I am going to do that. I'm gonna put the two wine right there. If you take goods and they can't go onto your customers, you can always place them into your kitchen. Your, your little kitchen here can hold any number of goods. The trick is, in order to get those goods out of the kitchen, you have to pay a dollar. So as a free action, you can spend a dollar to take three, up to three of those goods, out of the kitchen and put them onto your, onto your customers. I could spend a buck and I could move this cake and this wine onto my customers and I would have completed that customer. I will be doing that, but I'm gonna hold off on doing that for a second and you know, I think you'll see why. I'm actually done. I'm, that's all the actions I'm gonna take for this, this turn. And now because of the snake draft, I actually get to take the third turn. So we get to take another customer out here. I think I want this guy. The green guests are basically wild. They're a wild color. They can go in any of the colored rooms. So they can add a little bit of flexibility. As you can see, all of my tables are filled now. I only have three tables in my diner and they're all filled with guests. If I don't start moving these guests out of my diner and into these rooms, then I'm gonna be all clogged up here. I won't be able to take new guests in. So you always wanna to try to churn through these guys. Now that I have these three here, I'm gonna take my anytime action. I'm gonna spend a buck to move three goods from my kitchen and serve them. So I'm gonna take this strudel, give it to that guy. He's now happy. I'm gonna give this cake and give it to this guy. He's now happy. And I'll take this wine and give it to him. He's half happy. <laughs> now as a free action, I can move a customer into a room. Any customer whose order I've completed, I can move into a room. First, I'm gonna do this green guy. He got, all he wanted was a strudel, I gave it to him. So once you complete their order and you move them into a room, I'm gonna move them into this blue room. So you just flip that. I get the victory points. This guy doesn't give me any victory points, unfortunately. And then I get the special ability. And this special ability is I get to take three new staff members into my deck. So here we go. Now I have a bunch more folks that I can choose from. And I'm I'm not gonna go over all of these right now. Here's one of those in-game scoring people. They'll give you four points for each set of completed rooms. That would be a really good one since we're trying to get sets for that objective. So that combos nicely. And this one is great. This just means you can ignore these costs when bringing guests into your diner. So you can go ahead and jump the line and it'll be free. I really like that one. That can save you a lot of money and give you a lot more choice. We'll think about that. And now we're gonna do it again because we have another guest who has been fulfilled. We're gonna put them in this red room right here. They give us three points. We are on the board. And their special ability is we can play one of our staff cards for three bucks less. That is fantastic because we want to play the butler. We have a three discount, so that only costs us two bucks. One, two, we're down to six money. Now, preparing blue rooms is free for us. Wouldn't you know it, that's exactly the action that we're gonna take. We're gonna take one of these three. There are four dice there, so we can prepare four rooms. And if we wanted to pay a buck, we could prepare five rooms. That's tempting. I think we will. As much as I say I always run out of money in this game, I'm gonna do it. We're gonna prepare five rooms. Now again, we have to, it has to be adjacent to what we've already prepared. So we're gonna go up here. That'll be one. That'll be two. That'll be three. That just saved us five bucks right there. So that was cool. I think I want to prepare this one for four. Ooh, or do we prepare those two yellows? No. 
We'll stick to that and we'll just prepare one yellow. And that one's going to cost us a buck. Because that one was free. There we go. So we just prepared five rooms and it only cost us one buck. That was, that was pretty cool. Now Leopold's going to take his final turn. He's going to take the red. There's only one red worth zero points. He's going to prepare this red room right there. First one. So the question mark die means going to take the one that has the most. Those two are tied. So we're going to go by the hand. He's going to take the four. Not that it really matters right now. And here he's going to move three up on the emperor track. And he's going to prepare one of these objective cards. Now, if you look, there's a silver ring around there. And what that means is if we were playing on the easy mode of the game, we would ignore that. But since we're playing medium or hard, then we fulfill that action. He is going to go on top of one of these objectives. He's going to kind of start doing one of the objectives. And the question mark means he's going to do one that uh, he's furthest behind on. Since they're all tied, we're going to go by the arrow, the little hand again, and he's going to start on that objective. And you'll see how that works in the future. And there we go. He's done. That is it. At the end of the round, we clean up all these dice. We're going to re-roll these. We switch these around. So now we'll be first player. And we move on to round two.